somebody's got to stop.
If you don't have an AARP card, you know, it's up to you. I'll get it. I'm just going to throw that out. If you got an ARP card, you might be, you might be squeezing that one. That'll lay some wisdom on us here.
world mission next week. They're taking communion. We want that because we all know what goes on in the world. There are people who have no good water to drink. In Africa, they're helping them get wells. We know there's people that are in, in uh, slaves to, to, to trafficking of, of people around the world. We know that. We need the Word of God out. Yes. And you people can help do it. Yes. Just simply go whatever you can give. Now, I know you like me. You say, well, I don't have a lot of money. Don't take a lot. It takes whatever you get. That's it. Whatever you get. Yes. God can increase that money far beyond anything we ever do. I love you. Yes. Love the Lord. Show him you love the Lord. And when that they take up collection on Sunday, give your dollar, two dollars, five dollars, thousand dollars, whatever you want to give. But give it with joy because He's giving you an opportunity to do what he asked these people to do. Amen. And they did it well. Thank God for them. Yes. Thank God for the process. Love you all. Okay. Have a great day.
great time, but what I was really blessed by, all the churches that were represented in that direct, amen, amen. Getting the word out, just letting people know that Jesus is the answer. And as you can see that we were saying, God so loved the world. We were giving the message out. And so I, I thank God for the opportunity that he gives us to share with the community. With all of the things, the bands were great, all of those things there, but it was just great to just know that we're not ashamed of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of praise. Is he not? He is worthy of praise. So we have much to pray for this morning. We thank God for each and every one of you and your uh, bulletins. You will see the prayer request list of those. Please take it home with you. Remember those in prayer. This morning we want to pray for Jennifer and Seth and Corey and Darian and uh, Darian, Miller and Brandon, Tony and David, Jay and Cody and Ray. These are our young people, family that are in the military. And we just want God's hand to be upon them, watch over them and keep them. Um, I was talking to uh, Patty and uh, grandbabies, two of them. Yes, amen. One in Hawaii, amen, amen. The other one here, and Sheila, yes, grandma, grandma Sheila, yes, amen. And we just want to thank God for those births that has come and God's blessing upon the, the mothers and fathers and, and we know that they, they come from good seed. We trust God to do what he is called to do, to raise up men and women who will be lovers of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer. As we go to prayer this morning, I, I don't know what you stand in need of, but I know that we serve a God who is mighty. I said we serve a God who is mighty. Amen. Able to heal, set the captives free, restore broken lives. Amen. Now, maybe y'all don't know my Jesus like I know my Jesus. But he is able to do exceedingly above all that we've asked and hope. I know this morning, he is here. The presence of God is here to meet us right where we are. To break the strongholds that have been binding us up that we might be set free in him. To remind us that we matter to him. And that we are loved. <coughs> Father, we come this morning, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior and King. We thank you, Father, Lord, that you showed your love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, you sent your Son to die. But, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that on the third day you rose him from the grave, Lord. And the word of God is true, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so we lift up the family, Lord, of of the Chambers family. And we know, Lord, those who are in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, leave this world and enter into the presence of the Holy God. May we find comfort in knowing that God is true and He is real. He is alive and for all who call out on Him shall be saved. I pray this morning, Lord, and thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to witness you, Lord, in yesterday's parade. To tell to the world that sometimes is wondering, where are you at, Lord? That you're alive and you're well, Lord, and you're calling all to repentance to come unto you. We pray today, Lord, for healing, Lord, in the body of Christ. Touch us, Lord, in a mighty special way, Lord. And then I pray, Lord, for Mike and Cheryl. Lord, that your will be done. And that your heart and their heart, Lord, will be one. And in the midst of the Lord, we will give you all praise and give you all glory. I pray this morning, Lord, that we would understand, Lord, that you are the one who is over us. And we trust you, Lord, to lead and guide us because we are your church, your people, called by your name. Lord, I pray this morning that you would hold us, Lord, as we desire, Lord, to see this community come to a saving knowledge of you, this county, this state, this nation, Lord, this world, Lord, and as Dell shared with us, Lord, you came that none should perish, all should have eternal life, Lord. I pray this morning. I pray this morning, Lord, that we would find peace, Lord, within ourselves. And, Lord, and find, Lord, that in you, Lord, 
new life has been given. Lord, I pray this morning that, Lord, we would find a rest in you that only you can give. I pray right now, Lord, for the troubled heart, Lord, a heavy heart. A heart, Lord, that is just saying, Lord, I, I, I believe, but help me with my unbelief, Lord. In my weakness, make me strong, Lord. That's where we're at this morning. We pray, Lord, for the prodigal child, Lord, that is out there. We pray, Lord, for the young person in our community, Lord, whose life is taken, Lord, because of drugs. Lord, we all stand in need of prayer this morning. But Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would begin to look to you. To look to you for answers for our life, Lord. To look to you, Lord, for answers, Lord, on how to do and what to do. And Lord, and then look to you for the courage and strength to do it. I ask, Lord, that you forgive me of my sins. Hold me and keep me, Lord. Remind me, Lord, that I've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. And because of that, your Heavenly Father, Lord, he says to you, by your shedding of blood, our sins are forgiven. But Lord, even in my weakness, Lord, I ask for your strength, Lord. And so I pray for us today that, Lord, we're all standing in the need of prayer. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that we would look to you now, draw strength from you now, that we, that we might walk, Lord, in the power of your mind. And so, Holy Spirit, have your way. Guide us and direct us, Lord. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. I find it difficult at times that, that we have to encourage the church to give God praise. We shout at and jump up and, and scream when the bases are loaded and the ball is hit out of the park and everybody begins to cheer because the team just came from behind and took the lead. And yet when we have the eternal love of God, <laughs> We have to be encouraged to praise him. Oh, help us, Lord Jesus. Amen. For the word of God says we have a crown that is imperishable in Christ Jesus. Amen. All the trophies that the Cardinals have and the Cubs have and all whatever your favorite team might be, they will rust, they will decay, they will fall apart, they'll no longer be. But the crown of righteousness that you carry in Christ Jesus, it will shine forever. Amen. Amen. We have, amen. 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 It will shine forever in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we come to praise him this morning. We come to give him praise and we do that also in our giving. For we know and we've been taught. That our giving is worship unto the Lord. And so let us give worship to him with a joyful heart this morning as our ushers wait upon us. Amen. Would you come now? Oh, 
to bring forth to you, Lord, our tithe and our offering. We thank you, Lord, for we know, Lord, that you are able to take this and use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. We believe, Lord, lives will be touched and lives will be transformed, Lord, because of the message of good news that's come to them. We thank you, Lord, as you're blessed upon the givers. And then, Lord, we want to be mindful, Lord, that every good and perfect gift, it all comes from you. And so now, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. <laughs> Children's time.
And you know, uh, um, Amaya, after everyone gets it, will you sit it out there so 
I can share my candy with my friends here.
this is my song. Amen. Amen. And let's just give it a message that um, a young a person was uh, from our community, Adam Shockacy, was uh, burning uh, a ditch and it blew back upon him. And he said, spray it down in the burn unit. And the family is asking for prayer. We need the Lord. Amen. Suddenly, things come upon us. We need Jesus. Amen. Amen. This morning, as we look at the Word of God, we want to look at Matthew chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. Mark, excuse me, Mark uh, chapter 1, verses 16 through uh, 20. Let us read this word together. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who was worth the foot, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with their hired servants and went after him. Father, we thank you this morning for the call that you have given each and every one of us, that we might come unto you and rest that we might find new life in you. Lord, we pray this morning that that would become anew within us. Renew our hearts and our minds, and Lord, that we would remember the goodness of your love. We sung a song to tell the story. This is my song. Lord, you came to them, you came to us. Now, Lord, we ask that you would give us understanding in the truth of Scripture. We ask that you would write this word upon our heart. But also, Lord, bring to remembrance, Lord, that day when you said come. And then, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would be encouraged today to drop the nets and run after you. We ask that you would minister to us now, Holy Spirit, as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Why did they follow? I was asked that question about six weeks ago. There was a study that my sister was in, and when I had went home to visit, she asked, It's a great story. But why did they follow? Hmm. And we read it just now. It says Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. Saw Simon and Andrew, and later he saw James and John, and, and they immediately dropped their nets and they followed after him. I've shared Christ with many people, and you have too, but how many people did you just share Christ with and immediately they just dropped their nets and they just said, I want that Jesus that you have. What happened to them? It's important that we read the Word of God, that we begin to understand. And when you go to, to the Gospel of Luke, we find this written in chapter 4. It says it's the beginning of the Galilean ministry of Jesus Christ. And I'm just going to read to you. It's a lot of, a lot of reading here, but I want you to hear the story. It said that Jesus had been baptized. It says that Jesus, the Holy Spirit came upon him, and we talked about John the Baptist last Sunday. It says that John baptized Jesus, the Holy Spirit came upon him. That John said that Jesus was the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. And it said that after the Holy Spirit remained upon Christ, it said he went into the wilderness, and there in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, that he was tempted. 
by the devil. And then it begins here. After Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. After he had been tempted by the devil and overcome. The news of him went out through all of the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified by all. And so he came to Nazareth, and we read that two weeks ago, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he handed the book, he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found this place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to claim liberty to the captive and recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He then closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? The word of God tells us that even in the midst of hearing the word of God and Jesus in his boldness, they had heard about him. And all they heard was that John had proclaimed that he was the Lamb of God, that he was the Messiah promised to the nation of Israel. That John had understood that the Spirit of God was set upon the one who God had called and would remain. And John saw all of that and witnessed it. He was baptized. They heard a voice from heaven that said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. The word had gotten out that these things had happened. Something mysterious had happened in the midst of them. And then he stood and did what he always does. Then he went into the synagogue and he began to share. He picked up the scripture that spoke of him. And he said, this day you have seen it come into being. And then immediately, after hearing such a, a strong profession of faith, they said, is this not Joseph's son? See, sometimes we come into the presence of God. Instead of getting up and following him, we begin to question. But God. But God, I got things going on in my life and they overwhelm me. And, and God, I've been praying and nothing is happening. Uh, sometimes we might become discouraged because things don't move as fast as we would like them to have. But when we know what the word of God says, shouldn't we not find peace and comfort to just go on with Jesus? Shouldn't we not just find comfort in our heart to say the word of God says that I'm just going to go on and follow Jesus? But sometimes we're like the people that hear the great things, and even in the midst of those things, they are reminded by the things of their flesh, it's not this Joseph's son. And he said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. And whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. They had heard about what he'd done, the great feats of healing, the ministry of, of the fullness of God upon him. And they said to him, now do it here. Do it here. What they were saying to him, if you're really God, do it here. But we already know that the word of God tells us that because of their unbelief, he can only do a, a, a little word. And he goes on to say to them, surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows in Israel in the day of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three and a half years. And there was a great famine throughout all the land. But none of them was Elijah sent except for Sarah. In the region of Sidon, uh, there was a woman, a widower. The word of God tells us that Elijah went to them. But Jesus made a statement that none of the children of Israel, not none of the widows of Israel, did the prophet go to, but to a person in a strange land. And it says, and there was many lepers in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Cyrene. So what we find is that the Syrian was healed, and we know that. Naaman was dipped into the pool seven times, and out of that the leprosy was gone. 
that we know that a woman from a foreign country that she gave uh, to Elijah the first the first biscuit pancake or whatever it might have been he said make a cake for me and then serve yourself and we know that for that time period every time she went and took the flour and the, and the oil and scraped the end of it and fed them she would go back and there would be more flour and more oil it said in the midst of his own people, God was not able to do anything because of their unbelief. See, I'm saying that sometimes we, the church, miss out on the things that God is wanting to do because why? we have been in church so long. I know the story. I know the book. I've read it from front to, to back. I, I'm one of them who read the Bible yearly. And yet, he's not able to do anything in you. Because we think we know him. We know you. Are you not Joseph's son? Don't we know your brothers and your sisters? I know this. I've done this. I've been to that conference. I've been here to this. I, I go here, go there. I know the stuff. But nobody in our family is getting saved. Nobody's getting healed. Nobody's life is being turned around that we're in contact with. We know everything except how to give the good news of Jesus that somebody might be set free. So why did they follow? The scriptures go on to tell us in Luke and that it says that when Jesus had began to speak all of these things about the widower and then that of Naaman, and so all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and to thrust him over out of the city. And they led him to a brow of a hill on which their city was built, that they might throw Jesus down off the cliff. And then passing through in the midst of them, he went away. See, that would have tripped me out. We all around Jesus. We're getting ready to throw Jesus off the cliff. And he just walks right on to us. And we ain't able to do nothing to him. He has spoken power. That would have maybe changed our mind. But see, each and every one of us has seen the miracles and, and the wonders of God upon our lives. But has it changed us? Has it touched us in a way? Why did these four follow Jesus? And yet, right now, some of us are unwilling to take a step towards him to have things changed in our lives. We talked about a few weeks ago when my doubt hinders God's blessing. And we looked at the text. And Jesus shared about the people there in his hometown. And it was stated, now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because of the familiarity of knowing him, we know your father, your mother, it's your mother named Mary. And we got questions about her. Suddenly she's pregnant and they get married and uh, Some of y'all remember how we used to be in the church. Young girl gets pregnant. She has to come up before the church and ask the church for forgiveness. I never saw one boy ever have to get up in front of the church. Hmm. There must have been another um, heavenly birth. Hmm. Immaculate conception, I guess it's called. But here it said he could not do. They heard about all the great works. Are we not ready for some great works to happen here? <coughs> are we not ready to see God move, touch lives, change lives? Or are we not ready to find the heaviness of life that we seem to be draped with, be shaken off of us that we might be set free? Are we not ready? So far, my ideas, my thoughts have never worked. How about you? The way that you do things, well, Pastor, you know, I know what the word says, but this is how I feel. Well, how is that working for you? How, 
how you doing with this? A dear sister and I were talking and she said, but I just felt that I had to get this off my chest. And I said to her, I said, no, you didn't have to, but you wanted to. You felt a need to. And that's how we all are. God wants us to do it his way, but I just feel God, he understands. I just got to say the truth, but set you free. And we will say things that will cut one another deep to the bone. Why won't we follow? They saw the miracles. They heard the boldness. They saw the power of the word of God come out. And yet they would not receive what Jesus was offering to them. And because of that, where Elijah in the Old Testament had been given uh, during the drought, the mill and the oil, and he did the miracles. And, and, and the word tells us another time that he also laid upon the child and the, and, and the, the child who was dead come to life. And, but Jesus said, uh, none of that can be done here. You walk in lame, you, you go out lame. You come in blind, you go out blind. You, you, you come here dead, you, you stay dead. Some of us come and into churches and we find that they came in dead and they walk out just as dead as they came in but they've been a member for 60 years. <coughs> Dead men walking. But he goes on to tell us in Luke chapter four. He said there are Jesus in Capernaum that they talked about. The city of Galilee, when he went down to him, the city of Galilee, he was teaching on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching for his words was that of authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man who was, had a spirit of unclean demons. And he cried out with a loud voice. And the demon hollered, let us alone. What have we done? And what do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. It's amazing that the demons knew who Jesus was and the people who were supposed to be Knowledge in the word of God did not recognize him at all. The demon said, we know who you are. You're Jesus of Nazareth. Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked them, saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, what a word is this, for with authority and power he commands unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. But we go on to read further into the loop. Chapter 4, 38. Now he rose from the synagogue, and he entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick and with a high fever, and they made requests for of him concerning her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. The fever, and the other text says she had a fever, but it was said here that it was a great fever that she had. She wasn't just a little sick. She was overtaken. She, this fever was at a place of, of, that she was close to death and had to be rebuked and she was set free. But she was at Simon's house. Simon, Peter. It said, and when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, and they did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Now, when it was day, he departed, and he went into the desert place, and the crowd saw him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also because of their, this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. So it was 
as the multitude passed about him, to hear the words of God, and he stood by the lake of Gennesareth. And he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to pull out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. What we find is that something had happened in Simon's life. Simon saw Jesus do the miracles. He saw what he has done. And then not only did that, Jesus came to his house and, and touched his mother-in-law. And so when Jesus said to Simon, I want you to go ahead. I know you're tired. You've been doing what you know to do. But I want you to get back in your boat. I want you to launch out. I want you to drop down your nets. I, I know that you're a fisherman and, and I'm just a carpenter. I, I'm Joseph's son. I'm Mary's son. You, everybody knows my brothers and, and my sisters and stuff. But, but the demons know that I am the Christ. Simon, in obedience, just said to him, whatever you say, whatever you say. Hmm. And he sat down and he taught him. And they cast down and they went. Master, we have toiled all night, he said, caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your words, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and they, the nets were breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. Jesus had been healing, but Simon saw him. The difference between the other people and, and Simon was that Simon recognized that Jesus was the Christ. See, sometimes in our walk with the Lord, sometimes we, we read the scriptures, those things, there, but we don't necessarily see him. Even after we've been saved, we've come up front, we've asked him to come into our life, we went into the pool, we've done all of those things there. But then we get out and we try to live life on our own, but Simon saw him. And he recognized that you truly are the Christ and I am a wretch undone. I am a man who needs help. I'm a person who cannot do it on his own. I thought I knew how to catch fish, but Jesus, you know how to fish. We went back out into the same place where we've been. We caught nothing all night. You sent us out there and we dropped our nest and the nest was so full, my boat began to sink. We had to call for John and James to come. They took their nest and they filled them up and their boat began to sink. We have never caught fish like this before. You have to be the Christ because why? Nobody has a fish story like you just did. <laughs> now some of you have fish stories. We know how big the fish was. <laughs> but time you get done telling your story. Wife, stop looking at your husband. The boats began to sing. Immediately he was convicted in his heart. He said, I'm a sinner. I'm a wretch. I'm done. I know that you are great. I know that you are mighty. I'm a simple man, O oh Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all to follow after Jesus. When the question was asked to me, why did they follow him? They followed because they saw Jesus. They saw Jesus. They were touched because Jesus had done something they had never seen done before. We changed one man, says the liar stopped lying. 
And when the liar found himself not lying, like he used to lie, didn't want to lie, after he had given his heart to the Lord, he said, this Jesus might be real. The thief who stopped stealing saw the five bucks laying out there, but normally he would have just slid his hand and gradually just stuck it in his pocket. But even then, 20 laying there, and he said, I'm a changed man, and the thief stopped stealing. So you're not a thief. You may not even be alive. But why is it that we may be walking in unbelief because we don't trust him and his word. He has touched our lives. He touched their lives that day. They saw these great things happening and immediately. They left everything to follow him. But I found myself at times still holding on to stuff that's going to fade away. Like my thoughts and my ideas. My way or the highway. All of these things, when you line it up, when you see the glory of God, they don't matter at all. Are we not willing to drop the things we have put value in to follow after the things that God has called us to? Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Are we not willing to put our hope in him? Do not be drunk on wine. It tells us that those in leadership, it says a wise king will not fill him up with, with liquor and stuff because why he needs wisdom to be able to lead his people. What is it that we're holding on to? Pride? My idea? I have to tell somebody I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. If we ever look down, we'll find out there's another set of hands on those bootstraps. His name is Jesus. He takes the fool and changes the life of the fool. Jesus is our answer in every circumstance, situation we find ourselves facing. They immediately left everything they understood to begin to run after something that Jesus said to them, I'll make you fishers of men. They had no idea what he was talking about. They had no idea what he was calling them to. But over the next three and a half years, they began to understand that they would have to deny themselves and run after the things of the Lord. They began to understand that they would have to go the extra mile. They'd have to turn the other cheek. They would have to go the distance and run after Him. They would have to deny themselves and, and trust Him in everything in their life. Peter even said to Him later on, Lord, we have forsaken everything to follow after You. We gave up our business. I've left my wife and, and children and stuff to follow after now we know that he was continually taking care of his family because Paul later on says, I'm not like Peter. Barnabas and I are not like Peter and, 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 and the others. They got families to go to. We don't have that. Can't we have that? So he was there. He still was connected to his family, but he was running after the things of the Lord and putting himself in danger, following after the, the one who said to him, Come, we dropped everything and followed after him. Has not God touched your life in such a way that he has said to you, come? But you know, well, I can't come. You know, I, I can give you some of it. I, I have a loved one who, who said, I, 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 do I have to give up my smoke? And he ain't talking about cigarettes. Can I, can I hold on to that? How about if I hold on to this? Oh, that's what one couple said to me. So I asked them, I said, is she going to be your wife? Is he going to be your husband? Because you're living like that. But if you're going to run after the things of the Lord, you're going to have to make a choice who you're going to follow. And if your life is in that kind of a situation, that I'm telling you right now, you need to get it back. In fact, I even said to one couple one time, I know that you probably said, Pastor, you shouldn't say things like that to people, but I did. I said, you got a year to get it figured out. I said, you got a year to get it figured out. If you won't get it figured out, I'll figure it out for you. Because why? God wanted them to have the best. To have the best. All I know is that he said to Peter, he said to John and James, 
enter. Come. And they left everything. But he said to every one of us today, come, follow me. He said to every one of us today, come, follow me. So why are we saying? Why are we still holding on to this sacred thing that we, we won't do? What are you willing to give up now to let Christ be Lord in your life? See, that's what he was saying to them. You've heard all the things I've done. You've even tasted of my goodness. But yet you still not, will not give me all of you. That's what he was saying to them. I want all of you. All of you. You come, you come, you come, you see. But yet you still keep me at arm's length. He said, I came that I might embrace you, but you hold me at arm's length. I came that I might be intimate with you, that I would live in you, you would live in me, but you keep me at arm's length. When will you allow me to be your Lord and your Savior? The question today is that, why did they follow? But the other question is, why won't I follow? Why won't I give him my all? Why will I not trust him? What is it that I have that I think that I can figure it out on my own without letting Jesus have his way with me? They left it all. Because all he did for them that day was fill the nets up in a way that they'd never seen him catch like that before. He took them to the place of what they knew how to do and he said, I'll show you a better way if you just do it my way. Their nets filled up. Their boat began to sink. They cried for help. And when they tried to grab a hold of the nets too, their boat began to sink. These men who knew how to live life the way they knew how to live found out that Jesus knows how to live life better than any man had ever thought. When we allow him to be God, our lives will have the fullness of him. The blessings of God begin to overflow us that we cannot overtake it. So today we see it as not only will the blessings come that we can't overtake it, but the blessings come that they will begin to sink the boat. To be so blessed by him. If you're not blessed by him today, my question is, have you not seen, have you not heard, have you not tasted of his goodness? And if you say yes to any of those things, why is it then that you are not committed to follow after him with your whole heart? Why will we not follow with our whole heart? The word of God tells us that if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, that there comes a place in our lives where we have to begin to surrender and say, Lord, I, I need you. I heard that you came that, to forgive me of my sins and give me new life. I, I need new life. This old life is killing me. And I want to know how to live in you. And if you have never received Christ as your personal Savior, I'm going to ask you this morning, get up out of your seat. Get out of your seat and just come and run down here and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. My life is empty. My nets have nothing in it. I need you. And what I'm asking you to do this morning is forget your religion of what you think you have. Look at your net. If your net doesn't have anything in it, you need to get up here this morning so you can catch some fish. So your life can change. Maybe you just need prayer this morning. We'll pray with you. All I know this morning is that Jesus is saying to us, Come, and I will make you fishers of men. I will show you life in a way you've never seen it before. If you're stuck in a place this morning, you need to be touched by God. Get up out of your seat and come as we sing this song, How Great Is Our God. Let us stand to our feet. Don't try to do this on your own. You need Jesus.
Father, we thank you right now, Lord, for your daughter who you've given eternal life. And we thank you, Lord, that she has chosen, Lord, to be part of, of your family here at First Baptist Church. Lord, her coming puts a great responsibility upon us that we would nurture her and equip her, Lord, in the most holy faith in you. That we would run alongside her and, and be there with her and her family. And so, Lord, we thank you today, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord, in her life. Lord, let her know today her past is just what it is, it's just past. But this is the day of the Lord for you. May she receive, Lord, all the blessings you have in store for her. May she find peace, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you now, Lord, for this opportunity of love given the two of us today to receive from in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord prayer. The goodness of God that we understand that life is hard. We carry a lot of pain but it says that he is our healer. Not only our provider, he is our comforter. He comforts the heavy heart. And my prayer today for those of you that came forward, that you continue to go forward and not look back. He will be everything he said he will be. He promises that he will never leave us or forsake us. And he will be our strength through every storm that life brings our way. Amen. 
Okay. Um, when we sing the song, it's not just about the